Hey guys, welcome back. Another episode of back to building the sop with camel. Hope you enjoy this video. Watch along. All right, guys, just want to address a few things first, I guess. Um, it's not a real sop with camel. Well, it's there and it's a uh, sop with camel. Um, a few people have just asked me online, you're not building a real sop with camel. A bit like the model aeroplanes, I guess. If you build one out of balsa, does that mean it's not a real aeroplane or a real model? So in my opinion, and it's purely my opinion, I'm building a beautiful sop with camel from 1916. Yes, I'm fully aware the real one was made out of wood. Um, I could put an iPad in this if I want to, so, you know, I went back and through all through the photos, I didn't see any iPhones in 1916 that I could sort of look at. Um, really love what I'm doing here. It's not, I'm doing a, a replica, I guess, as opposed to a restoration. I could spend 40 hours building each rib out of wood with a real thin, sketchy airfoil. It's got a modern airfoil, modern materials. Let's build it. All right, so we had a few, had a few issues yesterday with the, the GoPro, literally, I see what they call it a GoPro because it goes on its own sometimes, has a mind of its own. So rebooted the GoPro, I think I've got it working now. I've put the root ribs on, just spaced them out. There's a Jabiru starts up outside. Um, just to angle that rib over a bit, it's all riveted on. Leading edge, sorry, trailing edge is just taped on at the moment. Got my straight edge ready to go. <coughs> I'm gonna square all this up and we'll get that clear code. What I'll probably do this time with hindsight, having already done the top wing, I think I'll get in here and do the aileron hinges prior to putting on the trailing edge so I can actually get in that way. And we'll get the aileron forward spar tube with the hinges, um, build that in as we go, then the trailing edge. Then I can also look at leading edge sheeting. So I've got a lot to do, and it's good. I don't have to sort of think too much um, as to what to do next. This will have to come off again, I guess, to drill down into that rib, just for clearance. Um, and I think I'll put a false rib, make up another rib, and run a full bit of sheeting down. So it gives me something to put my panel onto, I guess. Um, that's where we'll go with that. Let's see what happens. All right, one of the more glamorous sides of the job, I guess. We'll get down under here and lay on my back. And I'm just putting in the Clecos. I'll drill this, I'll just clamp it. With my clamp, <clears throat> clamp here, and we'll drill straight through there and cop all the swarf in the face. All right, you know the drill. Pull the clecos out. We'll deburr. Got that trailing edge on. Obviously, this will get this will get cut off, but it lets me know this is just touching. So is the other side. So it's sort of nice to know that my wings are. Uh, parallel, which is good. Um, I tried to get in before and I got no idea if I stand on the if I stand on the spar end of the day I got no idea how I'm going to climb into this thing. I might have to revisit a foot peg across that bridge too when we get to it. Right, trailing edge all uh, put on Beautiful and straight, both sides. Now I'll probably put the kettle on, have some lunch, and I'm not sure whether I'll add the, I might do the trailing edge here while I'm on a roll and got all those specific tools out. We'll clico it on, then I can remove it and we'll do the aileron hinges. 
going well. All right, so the other on piece, just a butt join with tape for now. I'll get my straight edge, which is on the floor, run it along here, probably clique the outboard one. There's only three to do. And also check that our wing is looking good that way. And that'll be our aileron trailing edge in place. Right, move on to the aileron spars. So first thing I'm going to do, and you'll learn this as you go, mark centre. I put centre on both sides, so I'll just do the scratchy trick. So just clamp them together. I will just run the ruler along, which will give me a nice line. Um, flip them over and do the other side. Gives me two nice centre lines at the highest point of each tube. Then we can work out, uh, I think it was nine inches from memory, from the end, in, and from the end, in. Got to work out that distance there as well of the tube. I think pretty sure from memory I cut the tube off the spar. Just mark the ends. I can see a fine line there, but just to make it easier to find on there, Scratch. And just put on my, these are the gap, three eighths of an inch I think it was. Um, put that on to the root rib. Well this will be the, that rib's the wing. I'm going to build the rib where I've got them up here. Already, that's a bonus of making four things when I only needed the one. Um, these are already made up. These parts will go <coughs> in there with that gap to form my inboard edge of the uh, aileron. <coughs> Do this to the other side. So I've just kept all my kept all the pieces and labelled them from the top wing. Okay, spars. I've put the put the spar in up against my wood block and don't overthink it, mark it, same length as this and we'll cut this piece off. That's what I did at the top. Then we're going to mark our holes on centre and basically hinge this piece first and then we'll connect it to the ribs and then the last thing will be to separate the ribs. So mark these ready to cut, just a simple thing. You've got the arrow, so which side of the tape to cut. So I've just put the, put the tape, I'm gonna cut the tape off if that makes sense. Um, the reason being, or well, a little thing, it, if I get this wrong and was to cut there, it gives me a second chance. Whereas if you do it the other way and cut the wrong side of the tape, you're gonna be the width of the tape, half inch, too short. So, the way I look at it, I know this is just overthinking it. I'm going to cut the tape off. The tape goes in the bin with this piece, or I'll put it in my scrap box. When you're finished, you don't have to take the tape off, for one. Save yourself six seconds. And, yeah, if you were to accidentally cut the wrong side of the tape, you're on the long side, as opposed to the short side, and you can shorten it up. Just a little tip. So, I grab the grinder to cut those to cut the spars, just notice they've got a bit of, bit of cord damage here. So before I electrocute myself, I'm just going to cut some pandrude straps to slide up in there. Probably two or three, and then wrap it in tape. Fix that up nicely. Fix up the grinder, the lead. Lob the ends off. I go in the scrap bin. Square these up on the sander. And there our aileron front spar. I've marked my hinge which will go here so I just need to find centre so once again with my trusty trusty jig piece, piece ignore the bits of wood I'll put that on there front front spar rear spar and just 
all I need is a little nick. Then I get a mark through my black line on centre. So we'll start with that, we'll pinprick that. I'll do all four locations. And a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking going on here. Once I drill that hole, jig block goes on, tells me where to drill the back hole on centre. Main thing with these hinges, you can have a little bit of leeway up and down, I guess, because it wouldn't really matter, is you want them square to the spar. That's where this block comes in handy. See how that works. That, that hole will already, already be drilled. I'll just put a spare drill bit in to collect that hole and then in the back. Gives me a perfect hole straight through both, well, both spars. When I say both spars, we've got an innie, inner tube, outer tube. So with using a hole punch, that little scratch, you can actually feel the scratch with the hole punch, get it on the line, two or three punches with my hole punch. We've drilled that one out and I've done all, done all four, two on each aileron. Now put the jig on and get jiggy with it. All right, you see how that works. The drill bit's in to pin that hole on that side. Back drill through my brass tube there, pull that out. End up with a nice hole on centre in the back and straight through. Then we upsize that to quarter inch in increments. But before we actually before we do that, I'll leave it at one eighth, and then we have to we'll come straight through straight through that hole like that and into the aileron spar and get that get that all spot on. So back drill it through. So with my drill bit through the main spar, I've got a rough mark there. I've already done this, but you can see the mark. My center line from previous, I can see that. Mine may not show up on the video. Make sure the aileron stock is right against my rib, if you like. And I just twisted that and it gave me a little tiny mark through the black, that's all you need. Then we'll pull that out. Punch it, drill it to one eighth, and I've got another jig block to put the hole straight through this tube. That'll be our first hinge, and then we'll mark the outboard one. So with the drill bit right through, just check for square. We've got a little bit of slop there, but we're square, and we're straight through the tube. Now I can put this all back through. Actually, no, I need to upsize to one eighth. Had a little bit of a fupa. The first hole was one eighth, but my jig's only sixteenth. So I've got, got different jigs. So this is sixteenth, the big one's one eighth. Um, so sixteenth drill bit at the moment. I'll just upsize those now to one eighth. Then in theory, the first, the first holes are given, like it sort of has to line up. It'll just depend how close it is down here. And then same again, drill bit in, tiny little scratch will tell me where the outboard hinge needs to go. So there you go. Got the eighth inch drill bit through the spar and into the aileron. If I cinch that up against the head of my bolt, we're against the wood. Now this one, just poke the drill through and I've got a line marked on the spar. I've already done it. And we get a little tiny nick on the spar and that'll give us our outboard hinge location. I'll go ahead now, charge the battery up on the GoPro. I'll do, do the other side as well, probably upsize those and get the hinges in. All right, time for a bit of hardware. I bought these previously, obviously for the top wing. Now these are about $30 each, these little guys, $36 each or something. Um, eye bolts, I think they're called. Four for the aileron side, four for the wing side. AN4 nuts, penny washers, and I'll bend these so they fit nicer on the, uh, around the spar. So I've got that pinned nicely, drill bit straight through. My jig blocks just work a treat to get that straight through. And it's actually level to the ground. 
sorry, get it in view. It's actually level to the ground as opposed to sort of being this way. It's just easier to sight it that way. It doesn't matter so long as, well, that's another benefit, I guess. Two hinge points, they have to be in line, if that makes sense. If you introduce a third, it could be up higher or lower, zig and zag, um, so you won't get a nice, you know, full and free control horn. So two is good, because a direct line, bang, they have to be in line, don't they? That's where we're going. So now I'll pull out, I'll upsize these to quarter inch, put the bolts in. You've got a little bit of fudge factor, I guess. If there's any, uh, any wiggle room, I noticed up on this one, um, there's a bit of up and down. Yes, I've got a castellated nut in there at the moment. That'll be replaced with a cotter pin and a car, and a, I'm sorry, I've got nylock nuts in there at the moment. It'll be replaced with a castellated nut and a split pin because it's going to rotate. Potential, has, has potential to rotate. Time to pull out the old Warren Brown. Um, inch, inch pound, torque wrench. AN4 is 50 to 70 inch pounds, so I've set it at 60. We'll talk this up, but the only time I use a shifter, the shifter holds the um, the IN bolt nicely and also get it pretty close to vertical. And I'll talk that up. Done. One hinge. Just need to square that up to the tube. Beautiful. This all takes time. Just the penny washers, they're 3 16th. I just need to upsize them to quarter inch. Drill them out, obviously deburr, and then I bend them over. All takes time. Right, so I just set everything up, get my square, and just check everything's square, I guess, like that, close enough. They'll self center a bit when I connect them. Done the same on the wing. So my hinges are in here. Now we will bolt the spar in. So I'll put the spar in, put these bolts in. They'll just be whatever I can find for now. AN3 bolts with probably a bunch of washers. Then we'll have the spar there. Then I can make one, two, three, and the root rib on both sides. And we'll have an aileron starting to take shape. Okay, got a real, real time stuff. Got the hinges drilled, I'll get some uh, bolts. Two and three bolts to go on the outboard side with the head outboard. This one's in. Now this should just miss. Beautiful. Got some washers in my hand. So that all worked out well. So that'll be my that's the hinge if you like. Now I'll do it up tight on centre. Just eyeball centre for that. Then I've got these, a bunch of these rear gussets to make up. And that'll get the aileron locked in. And then also the, uh, the root rib piece going well. All right, so into my, <clears throat> my wing box. I've got my pulleys sort of half made. The pulley brackets I'll bend up. Uh, the control horns. Yep, look bigger. And what else have I got? Spare bits. Now the, the inboard ribs are already done. Then I've dug out my little aileron template. So this would have been that guy up there. 
like that. So I need one, two, three, four. Four going that way and four going that way. And then I can, I notice I've got them all outboard there. All going inboard, sorry. Apart from this one, I don't think it matters much which side it goes on. Probably space the holes away from the hinge a little bit. Fairly basic stuff, but the four, four of each cut out, I just mark each side which way I'm going to bend it. It's very easy to bend them all up and they're wrong, like the wrong orientation. So we should be good. Let's bend them up. So we're on to foldy my foldy. Probably do three at once. Four clamps, let's do let's do four at once. How many have I got? Eight. Let's not push our luck. We we'll go two at a time so we have it Use the Trojan clamps. It's a little bit cumbersome doing this, but it um, does the job. Clamp down, up to about a 90, go past. 90. Real critical, but do it as neat as we can. Four of them. And Checking off that. Got four that way, two that way, do two more. There's my eight brackets that will fit on. So those brackets I just did. Uh, looking up there, the big tape is the bottom. That'll go in there, I'll drill it, mark it, trim it off for each section. All right, it's just about to rig uh, rivet this um, just about to rivet this bracket on being the first one out but then I noticed that's going to be the one with the control horn so the, the control horn goes on so I just need to work out where I want that now can't just copy the top wing see the the horn comes out the top or the cable comes out the top and the pulley is above the compression strut and that all works nicely. Now looking here, I sort of need to know where my pulley's going to be. 
and the cable has to get back this goes that way to there so depending on where where this goes so I may need to move it to that side for whatever reason so anyway I've just stopped on this rib just need to have an idea in my head hopefully there's enough room underneath that compression strut for the pulley basically do the same as up there but flip it upside down um, but there may not be enough room anyway I'll have to think ahead on that one right so if I copy the top the pulley's going to look something like that above this, compre above this compression strut and then my cable haven't done this so you guys are along along for the ride if I put on the inboard side obviously it goes up against the spar there then with my string and I'll just run here cable well, it looks like that'll work now that's more of a fluke than anything the cable will come around the pulley I like the cable to go through that pulley so it can't jump off and just go as opposed to if it came from the left hand side and around the pulley it could just jump off and fall off completely I like it through those blue mounts if you like um, so somewhere there and then underneath you can either put the, the control horn on the inboard side or move, even move it no you can't move it to the app alright so the control horn control horn needs to go on the inboard side and I just need to pay attention uh, it'll be down a fair way maybe something just where it has potential to touch that's going to work alright, more good fortune than anything lack of plans but it looks like that's going to work alright, this gets back to do whatever you have to do to get the job done so I've clamped my 3 8 spacer in there I've got the ribs clamped top and bottom to make them symmetrical. I've got a quarter inch under the front here, which goes in under these other ribs. 3/8 spacer sort of in there. We're all square, or the slot's straight. And now I'll drill it. It looks horrendous, but it'll get the job done. All right, guys, so that's what we got, got done these few days, had a few doctor's appointments and the like but all going pretty well good time to stop um, I've got the aileron trailing edge on Clecoed all these brackets are on Clecoed my hinge just got to undo the nut and it should should hinge once I cut out the aileron itself Yeah, looking good. All those are in. All those brackets. The hinge. Got a big hinge gap, but hey, what do you do? Here's the end result. The end result is probably about an inch, I guess. I could put a shroud on that, but we'll see how we go. Um, what next? Next session, or next video. I'll come in, pull out each part, remove, you know, the drill, Clico, deburr, getting tired. Take them off, deburr, clean everything up, clean up these edges so they're not, see, it's, it's proud at the moment. Grind all those down, get all the mask and uh, all the texture off. Then I think. Uh, what do I need to do? I need to do that extension tube. I actually forget how I did that now. Cut a piece of tube, slot it, get this end right. 
with a jig, clamp it, and then drill some holes here and mark that tube, then take it off and rivet it all on the bench. That'll be the tip, which will finish this off really nicely. Then I can look at the um, control horns. So this side, copy the top, be on the inside. The control horn will be here. And like I said on the other side, I'm hoping in that gap there, my cable will come up. I might have to make a fair lead or a something. Um, maybe I don't. Might be okay, we'll see what happens. These, these are long enough to get um, snipped off. I'm really happy with the, the hinges. I didn't have to sort of have my process in place, so I just copied that. Now the root, still not too sure. Obviously this will get this will get docked off here. Or will it? Just thinking out loud. Could actually build that in now, couldn't I? Um, on the top at least. But to keep it simple to cover, I think I'll just do a butt rib here and this will become a panel. We need to look at um, might sound funny guys, but I honestly don't know how I'm going to get into this thing. If I step up there, I can make a footstep on the spar, but it's a long way up to throw your leg. I thought I was hoping I could stand on that and throw my leg over the turtle deck. But it, uh, it's not that glamorous, so I may need to revert back to the foot peg. Stand by on that one. I'd love to be able to just bolt something on rather than get the welder back to weld a peg. Might have a look online or something if I can get a you know, cinch clamp or something. Well, you don't want it to let go because you're just paranoid about slipping off and it's, your foot's going to go straight through the wing. So there she is anyway. Sob with camel in her glory. Slowly gathering dust. It's not going to look like much when I pull the wings off, but when I stand back, it's got a nice presence in the hanger now. Looks good. This side's up to the same. So I've done both sides at once this time, rather than one and then the other. My little whizz around chair is fantastic, working well. The tube. So there you go guys, that'll end a, uh, another week's worth of building. Probably probably about, uh, let's say two, three, five, nine, and today, uh, 12 hours, I guess. Um, sometimes life gets in the way, that's all right. Plotting along, if you haven't subscribed, I don't ask too often, but feel free to hit that subscribe button, that doesn't cost you anything. You get all the updates on my latest video when it comes out. Um, I try and get one out a week at least, which means I'm building. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.